Yeah, well, you know, the first off, the, the, the one thing that made it easy for us was our, our players really understand work ethic and they understand the grind and they understand how to, you know, how to uh, each day mentally you got to be engaged, but also physically. And, and they've done a great job. You know, offensively for us as coaches, you know, we, we really, it's, it's a juggling act because we got to set mindset. We got to set everything from fundamentals to how you carry the ball as far as how we see it to what your steps are, what your, you know, how you're shooting your hands, where your eye placement is. So you're trying to teach a bunch of fundamentals, but we also have to put a lot of scheme in. And, and from our standpoint, I'm kind of a heavy loaded in the front end. So we're trying to throw a lot of stuff at them early. And, and as we get going through practice five, six, seven, um, we start to slow down. But those first four or five practices, we're putting a lot of offense in. We're putting a lot of scheme in. Um, even though we're still trying to teach fundamentals. So it's a, it's a juggling act that um, thankfully our players have done a great job as far as just being all in and being engaged. And that's a big part of learning is you have to truly be engaged. And it's a big learning process right now. Well, you know, the biggest thing that we're going to try to get across to them from a personality standpoint is hard-nosed, tough, physical, um, but then uh, respect the football. And those two things have to happen. And, and you can still be a hard-nosed, tough team and throw the football and throw it well. You can still be a hard-nosed, tough football team and get out on the edge. But we also got to run the ball between the tackles and we got to respect the ball. And when we talk respect the ball, we're talking taking care of it, not turning it over. And part of taking care of the football is also the O-line doing their job. It's also the running backs in pass protection doing their job because a lot of times turnovers happen because somebody else didn't get their job done that relates to the ball getting turned over. This is a K-State offense that, that you inherited that ranked 10th uh, in the Big 12 Conference last year. Just what are the challenges in maybe getting their mojo back going and um, maybe the challenges in making their offense yeah, I, I think uh, the, the biggest thing from my standpoint is more just n not harping on, not dwelling on, not worrying about what the past is. It's more us understanding how each guy fits in the, their new role and then taking advantage of opportunity and being prepared to take advantage of the opportunities they get. Coach, what was kind of the mindset of switching Sammy Wheeler from quarterback to tight end? Uh, probably the biggest thing is that after two or three practices, really looked at him and said, uh, Sammy, we see it probably as the third or fourth quarterback, yet I think in the tight end situation slash fullback, because our tight ends and fullbacks are really somewhat interchangeable, um, we felt like he could put himself into the mix of, uh, I'm not telling you he's already the third guy by any means, but put him into the mix of trying to figure out how do we use the best athletic uh, skill set that we can find, and he's a guy that I think has a very good skill set. Um, you know, I think it's still quite a ways away, uh, and when I say that, I would say just from um, outside looking in, and now obviously I'm inside of it, but from outside looking in, I thought really, really good wide receivers from a skill standpoint, um, an O-line that comes back that, that a lot of guys have played quite a bit of football. Um, the O-line part fits right in with what we would have said we would have had at North Dakota State. Um, the wide receiver skill set's much better than what we had at North Dakota State. Um, that being said, we're not as deep at tight end and fullback as we were probably at a North Dakota State. We're not as deep at tailback as we were at North Dakota State. So um, I'm smart enough to understand that you can't put a square peg into a round hole. So we're going to have to use the, the, the skills that each guy brings to the table, yet we're still going to have that mindset of the style of football is going to be very similar to what we did at North Dakota State. So we might not play as many two tight end fullback formations, um, early um, as we would have at a North Dakota State. Um, and what, what would you say your first impressions are on running back James Gilbert? Oh, very happy with James. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a guy that uh, understands that part of the game is still pass pro, and he's done a good job trying to learn that part of the protection aspect, but he's also a guy that's dynamic when you put the ball in his hands, um, and obviously uh, we're, we're very happy with him and glad we have him. I've uh, been very impressed with him, and you know, uh, 
Um, you know, obviously Zuber not playing right now, not practicing. Um, you know, I, you know, the, he's taken full advantage of his reps and his opportunity. And, um, you know, we as a staff have looked at it and said, there's a guy that, that we got to keep developing him, but that I think we're going to be able to say we, we'll be able to count on him. We'll be able to put him in the, in the mix. No, uh, I honestly, uh, I, from my standpoint, again, being a new guy to, to some of these guys as far as just seeing what they bring to the table, um, I, I would have no doubt that, that the guy would have played wide receiver since the first day he stepped on the field. Um, and what I'm getting at is he's attacked it. Um, he's, he's shown a skill set from the receiver standpoint that you would expect out of a receiver. So I've been, I've been very happy with him. Uh, to be very honest with you, I, I don't don't know the, from that standpoint. Fair enough. And then similar to Kelsey's question, I don't I can't word this right because I don't want to be disrespectful to the level of, F, of you know FCS football. But how different is the talent level of the teams you're coaching between North Dakota State and then here at here at KC? You know, to be very honest, I think the talent discrepancy comes to when you start talking about the second, third, and fourth guy in your in your position group. Um, you know, FCS programs over the years. Generally speaking, their top 11 that you're, they're rolling out there are probably pretty darn close to what, what we would have. But the problem is when you play a 12-game schedule, you're not worrying about the number ones. You're worrying about those twos and threes being able to contribute when they get put into the opportunity to, to play. You have a true freshman quarterback on campus already. How much has he been effective, if, if at all, or is he pretty overwhelmed? Right uh, to be honest with you, it's kind of surprising because uh, I would have assumed that it would be, hey, man, prom's coming up. But, but he's not thought that way. He's not attacked it that way. Um, you know, from the very first start of winter conditioning stuff, he jumped in and, and did it no different than any other young man that's here. Um, his uh, learning curve actually has been very, very good. Now, he has shown the overload, meaning practice one and practice two, really, really strong. Practice three, it was like all of a sudden, Oh wow, we got a lot of stuff in, and it was true. We did. We did have a lot of stuff in. He swam a little bit on practice three, bounced back practice four, and really, I felt like he did a good job. The thing that he's done the best at is, whether he knows it or doesn't know it, he's convincing in the huddle that I do know it, and that's a huge key. Because when your quarterback comes in and that old line's looking at him, and, and that old line thinks, hmm, I'm not too sure this dude has any idea what's going on. His demeanor, his control of the huddle has been extremely good for being a, should be a high school senior right now. Speaking of offensive line, you, you mentioned the physicality kind of being the basis of this offense. Uh, that was somewhat similar to the Snyder yep. offense. How good has the offensive line been in being able to adapt to what you want? Uh, you know, really good. Uh, and, and I think part of it is because there's a, quite a few guys that have played a bunch, and I think they understand that the style of football we want to play truly goes through the O-line. Um, and, and they've done a great job just embracing Coach Riley and, and taking the coaching. Um, I've not seen one of those guys uh, have a reaction like, hey, I got this, hey, I understand this. All of them have really uh, gone at it from the standpoint of, I do know how to play, but I'm willing to listen and learn and, and take it from a new perspective, which has been really, really refreshing. It's been great. You know, it's been impressive uh, because he's been similar to the O-line. As much football as he's played and as much as he's played in the Big 12, at times you would anticipate that he would have that, hey, I've got this, I understand this. But from a coaching perspective, not one time has he done that. I felt like he's truly tried to learn a new offense and learn it from the ground up, meaning learn it right from base one and keep building on it. And a lot of times you'll find somebody in, in – Right, wrong, or indifferent, I've gone into a couple different situations where it's a new offense with an older team. And those guys a lot of times want to put things in their, quote, terminology, where Skyler's done a great job of putting it into, quote, our terminology. Not what he used to do, not what it used to be. This is what it is. And that's why, in my mind, he's done such a good job in a short time frame of being a good leader because he's trying to help everybody learn 
who we are, not who it used to be or what it is. It's who we are as a whole group. What are your initial thoughts on having the whole course and what each month is off and going? Well, you know, I think not just him, but there's a number of them that, that really are good leaders, really understand, worry about what I can control, but then go out and tell the guy next to you, hey, this is how we're going to get it done, and, and he's really done a nice job. You can tell he's a guy they respect. Here's one of your guys. I think he's going to be in here a little later, and he's, of course, the top ten. But uh, being the center, is, is he kind of the fixture in the end? Yeah. There getting, getting for for what, what we're going to do, your center has to be a guy that understands the schemes um, because he's it's important – um, that he's able to communicate on both sides, meaning it's not real easy for the right tackle to truly re communicate to the left guard, but it's pretty easy for that center to be able to be able to communicate what the right tackle's issues are to the left guard, and he's done a nice job with that. And um, just to expand on Skyler, what has impressed you most about him from a playing ability so far? Uh, to be honest with you, his arm strength. For being a guy that's probably, I don't know, I'm guessing a little bit, 200 and 15, 218 pounds. Um, he's got a very strong arm, and, and, and it comes out in a hurry. Um, he's done a he's thrown the ball very, very well. Knock on wood, we, we've done a nice job taking care of the football in the passing game. As far as installs go, has this been um, maybe an I don't want to say easy process, but maybe a smooth process, or has it been kind of rough? Uh, it's been smooth, but not easy by any means. Uh, smooth from the standpoint of our guys have spent the time and done a nice job trying to learn it, but uh, it's still when the quote uh, play is the, the snap happens and now you got to play and it's fastball and and those D linemen are going full out and the linebackers. Um, there's a lot of thinking that's going on and we've got to keep progressing to where I can just go play and not have to think. Now is that going to that that might not take place until. 10 practices into fall camp before it really starts slowing down because of the number of things that we do. Is this going to have a very distinct flavor in the scheme of, in the realm of the Big 12 offenses? Uh, I think so, just because, uh, you, know, you know, not everyone in the Big 12, but a lot of people are going to be in the gun 75, 80% of the time. I, and I don't see us in the gun 75 or 80% of the time. I, I see us to a little bit more of a, you know, 50-50, 60-40 being under center more than in the in the gun. I want to ask you, Marty, that's quite a few questions about Skyler and also you got the one question about Jaron, but what have been your impressions of uh, John and, and Ryan there at, at quarterback? Um, I think uh, uh, all four of the guys that have been just mentioned have done good things on different times. Um, the best thing that all of them have done is they've taken care of the ball, and that's been an emphasis from the first day that we all got here was – we cannot, we got to be efficient passing the football. Um, John also, a very, very strong arm, um, understands the game uh, probably better than I expected him to and has done a nice job with that. Um, obviously, he's a big, raw athlete, but, but he's a quarterback. And, and that's the thing I'm probably the most impressed with with him is he doesn't just go rely on his athleticism. Um, he's, he's operated from a quarterback standpoint. Um, you know, I think Ryan, uh, he, he's got he's to keep coming along. He's got to understand that the run game's just important, as important as the passing game. And uh, we don't run zone read, power read, as much as a lot of people in the league do. But when we do run it, we got to do a great job taking care of the football. And the, the hard part about zone read and power read and that type of offense, it's really option football. Um, meaning that there's a ride, there's a read key. I'm either keeping it or I'm or I'm or I'm handing it off, and you've got to you got to really understand respect the football, and you know so taking care of it's got to be a high priority, and and that's you know each each practice it's got to be a high priority, and I think he'll keep understanding that. I just wanted to ask about at the end of last season he came on really strong and ended up keeping his red shirt. <coughs> You know, Malik, obviously, when he walks through the door, I think everybody would say, wow, that guy's what they're supposed to look like. That guy's going to be a guy that's going to help us. And, and there's nothing that's been shown so far that he won't. I think he will help us. And I think he'll be a, a guy that will show up early. Um, I think that he still, though, is young. He's still a long ways from probably as ready for the Big 12 as some of the other guys are. 
You know, Ryzen's a new guy here from a standpoint of getting on the field, but he's not young. He, he's, you can tell he's been through some of the, he's been in the fire a few times. I think Malik um, still has some room to grow as far as just understanding the importance of day in and day out, each down's an important down.